about in this video, it's super important to strategy, positioning, and consistency. We get up here at the non-volley line, we're dinking, we're doing all sorts of stuff. And what we struggle with is when should I take the ball in the air? When should I let it bounce? How do we figure that out? Hey, one, it's important to recognize why is it important to dink in the air? It's important to take time away from your opponent. It's important to getting you in your position, staying in your position, so you're not backing up and losing control of the point. So when we're doing this, we're gonna set up what your zone is. So recognizing a forward position instead of a backwards position. So one thing super important when we are taking balls in the air, maintaining our position. I don't wanna be shuffling around. I don't wanna be trying to get ready for the next point. I want there to be flow from one shot to the next shot, okay? They're going right into each other. So what we're gonna show you is a nice drill that I like to use a lot with my players. Hey, okay? I've got my partner, she's already set up with her zone site. Hey, okay? I've got two little cones right here. And this is how we set it up. So one, I want to think my feet are going to be slightly wider than my shoulders. Okay? I'm going to take my paddle and just go straight ahead. Okay? So I want to feel my base range of motion. So the butt of my paddle is about right here. So I'm going to drop this cone to show me the distance between the non-volley line and where I want to strike it. So now I'm going to take that. Okay? We're creating a V shape from the outside of our knees forward, okay? So my goal when I'm doing this, okay? So we are gonna stay within this line. I'm not going to chase the ball. We're not trying to win the point, okay? What I wanna do is use these cones, okay? So this is my line, okay? I always want my paddle to stay in front of the cones, okay? So if that paddle gets behind here, behind the cones, I am now late, I'm behind the ball, okay? If I'm stretching out in front of me, see how my paddle is going forward, okay? I don't want to go to the side. That's going to cause me to back up. It's going to cause me to disengage my shoulder. When I think of dinking in the air, I think of almost an egg toss. I'm letting the ball come to my paddle and I'm kind of pushing it away. I want to absorb the ball. I don't want to do that much. The difference when I'm taking a ball off the bounce, okay, is that swing is going to be a little bit longer. Okay. If I'm taking it in the air, an inch, maybe two inches, I'm kind of absorbing that ball when I'm doing it. Okay. Important recognition, I don't want to be reaching where my chest is folded over my zone. Okay. I want my chest to be able to stay upright where I can turn my shoulders right to left. Okay. That's going to tell me whether or not I can strike that ball. So we're just trying to recognize that when we're doing this, we are aiming back here. We're going to try to kind of make it difficult on our partners so that we're making it as realistic as we possibly can. Okay? So notice when we're doing this, I'm not adjusting too much. I'm pretty much strictly staying on my forehand. I'm not trying to change back and forth. It's a lot easier to be manipulating that ball with that tip of the paddle down or forward. As the ball moves, I'm simply moving my hips and my weight from side to side. So often when players are trying to reach the ball, they're too compressed. They're squatting, their weight is 50-50. When that weight is 50-50, you cannot move those hips and shoulders. So we wanna be light on our feet when we're doing this exercise. I wanna be able to reach forward comfortably so I'm not out of position. That weight distribution is going to lift the ball for me. Okay? Notice the spacing away from the body, that's extremely important. I'm not bending my elbow in and hinging from here. I'm letting my shoulder and my paddle do the lifting for me. What's allowing this control is that minimal movement. Okay? Now that difference, we took that cone and we went from right here, my hips are forward. When we change this drill to cross court, okay, now we have to think that changes the angles just a little bit. So now I'm going to turn my toes in this direction because this is my cross court. 
So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Okay, that difference is I'm going here, so my weight is gonna be more on my inside leg. Now I'm going to adjust the cones into that V shape, okay? So now look at the difference that changes in the zone, okay? What players often do is they're doing this, they're square to the net, and now they're hitting balls way too close to their body. By rotating, this is now a forward position, so my paddle still stays comfortably in front of these cones. What's very, very important when you're changing this direction is my weight is gonna be predominantly in the leg that's towards the ball. So what I think about, I've got 70 to 80% of my weight in this leg, and the rest is over on my back leg. This is kind of my support system. I think of almost like a spring that's going forward. Okay? So I'm not coming back here, because this would make my zone vulnerable. I want to try to cut off the ball in my zone out here. Can I take it in the air? Again, I've got that balance. My head is up. Okay? So if I drop my paddle down here, and I let my head drop, now the ball is too close to your body. So important factor when you're doing this drill, very still in the upper body, still head. We're really adjusting dynamically the lower body and letting our paddle do the catching. That's gonna create that consistent ball over the net and maintain your position at the line while putting pressure on your opponents.